When it comes to fishing, the direct connection between us and the fish is our fishing line. One might say that this is the most important piece of equipment that we own. But recently I made a video where I tried to find the best fluorocarbon fishing line and it became extremely evident to me in the comments that there was a lot of big mistakes that anglers make with their fishing line. So today I wanna to talk about those, so stay tuned. It's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. Whether you're looking for fishing line, rods, reels, hooks, lures, you can find it all at Sportsman's Outfitters. Not only can you find fishing gear there, but you can also find all of your hunting gear there. And typically you're gonna find some of the best prices across the internet for some of your favorite fishing gear and hunting gear at Sportsman's Outfitters. So if you guys would like to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel, click those links down below in the description and shop at Sportsman's Outfitters today. Now, probably one of the biggest mistakes that I have seen when it comes to fishing line is anglers that don't understand the different characteristics of the different types of fishing line that we have. Now there are four main types of fishing line. We have monofilament, we have braid, we have fluorocarbon, and we have copolymers. Now a lot of you may already understand the differences in these different types of lines, but for the person who is just getting started in fishing, the beginner, even the intermediate fisherman, I quickly want to go through the characteristics of each of these lines. Now let's first talk about monofilament line because this is probably the most widely used line out there on the market, whether you fish for crappie, catfish, or bass, this is what a lot of anglers use. Now monofilament was created back in the 1930s and it's actually a nylon line. We just tend to call it monofilament. Now the first characteristic about nylon monofilament is that it actually floats on top of the water. This makes it great for some techniques like topwater techniques, but not great for all techniques. Now the second characteristic about mono is that it is probably of the lines we're gonna talk about the stretchy line. It can stretch 30, 35% at times. And we're going to talk a lot about the stretchiness of these different lines. It actually really impacts a number of different factors that we talk about when it comes to fishing. Another characteristic about monofilament is that it is nearly invisible underwater. It has a refraction index that is a little bit higher than lines like fluorocarbon, but it's nearly invisible underwater. Now, probably the best thing about monofilament is that it's a pretty cheap line. You can buy thousands of yards of mono for like 10 bucks. Now, moving on to braid. Braid is very different when it comes to all the other different types of line. Braid is actually made by braiding different strands of line together. Now the first characteristic that you should know about braid is that it has zero stretch to it. This is the biggest difference between it and all the other different lines. Because it has zero stretch, this makes a huge difference when it comes to the hooks that you use on your baits, the baits themselves, the rods that you're using. And we're going to talk about that all on the second mistake that a lot of anglers make with their fishing line. The next characteristic about braid is that it is not invisible at all. Most braids you will see on the market are either a natural green color or a really bright green color. This is something that bass can very easily see in the water. The third characteristic about braid is that it floats on the water for the most part. Once it kind of gets waterlogged, you will see it kind of start to sink down. But for the most part, braid floats, also making it good for top water baits. Now, the fourth characteristic about braid is that it is actually pretty expensive line. The good thing, though, is that braid will last you a long time. For me, as long as I can keep that spool on my reel pretty full, I will use braid for not just one season. For example, this, this rod and reel right here, this is the third season that I've used this exact same braid that is on this reel. As you can see, I've started to lose some of the braid that's on here and I really like a full spool, so I'm gonna have to re-spool this, but the braid has remained on this exact reel for three seasons now. Now let's move on to fluorocarbon line. This is, for me, a bass fisherman. This is the bass fisherman's probably favorite line. 
Now, fluorocarbon looks a lot like monofilament. It is a clear line. As a matter of fact, one of the characteristics about it is that it is nearly invisible in the water. No fluorocarbon is absolutely invisible, but it is almost as close to invisible as you can get when it comes to fishing line underwater. Now, the other big thing about fluorocarbon line is that it is a very dense line. And because it is dense, it actually sinks in the water. That is one of the biggest differences between all these lines is that fluorocarbon actually sinks in the water. Now, the third characteristic about fluorocarbon is that it is a very abrasion resistant line. It does really good in cover. I think better than mono. There are some really good monos out there that are pretty abrasion resistant, but fluorocarbon to me kind of takes the cake when it comes to abrasion resistance. Now, kind of a big myth when it comes to fluorocarbon line is that it doesn't stretch and fluorocarbon absolutely stretches. It probably doesn't stretch quite as much as mono. Uh, a lot of monos are in that you know probably 25 to 35 percent stretching but i've seen a lot of fluorocarbons that will stretch at 20 22 even 25 percent so it doesn't quite stretch as much as mono but it definitely stretches now the fifth characteristic about fluorocarbon is that it is the most expensive of all these lines you might find braid that is actually more expensive per yard than fluoro, but braid tends to last you a lot longer than fluoro. A lot of times with the fluorocarbon that I use for, for tournament fishing, I'm respooling this kind of constantly. Almost every big tournament that I fish, I'm putting on a fresh line. So it is a very expensive line. Now the fourth line is copolymer. Now when it comes to the characteristics of a copolymer, these are pretty much the same as monofilament. And that's because most copolymer lines are basically a fluorocarbon coated mono line. So a lot of your characteristics are the exact same as mono. The few biggest differences though, is I feel that copolymers are a little bit more abrasion resistance than your standard mono. It's kind of like fishing a really premium grade of monofilament. But the good thing about a copolymer, it is also like monofilament, it's fairly inexpensive. So if you're on a budget, I would definitely look into copolymers. Now that you know the different characteristics of the different fishing lines, this actually brings me to mistake number two when it comes to your fishing line. And this actually has to do less with your fishing line and more with the tackle surrounding your fishing line. Because when it comes to picking out a line, pretty much depending on what line you use is really going to dictate what rod you use, even what hook that you use because of all the characteristics we just talked about. If you're like me and you like to listen to some of your favorite professional anglers talk about the different setups that they use for different lures, you will find that sometimes this can be drastically different. For example, I love to fish a jig. Now, one of my favorite jig fishermen is Randall Tharp. Now, his typical setup for a jig is a seven foot, six inch, heavy power, fast action rod. One of my other favorite jig fishermen is Seth Fighter. Now, Seth Fighter uses a seven foot rod, medium heavy power, that is more of a moderate fast action, which is really more of like a spinner bait rod. Now, if you're just getting started in fishing, this could be kind of confusing because these two rod setups are very different. One is a lot more powerful, where the other one is a lot less powerful. Now, the reason that there's such a big difference between the rod that Randall Tharp uses and the rod that Seth Fighter uses is because they use two different types of line. Randall Tharp, he uses straight fluorocarbon when he is fishing a jig. Like I talked about, fluorocarbon does stretch, not as much as mono, but it does stretch. So he can get away with a heavier power, a fast action rod, because there's a little bit of give in the line. So when he sets the hook on a big fish, that line is going to stretch a little bit, which means that he can have a stiffer, heavier power rod and not break the line. Now on the flip side, Seth Fighter uses braided line to a small fluorocarbon leader. So for the most part, when he goes to set the hook on a fish, there's not a lot of give in his line because he's using mostly braid. Now, because there's not a lot of give there, 
he can get away with using a lighter power and a more moderate fast action rod. If he were to use that really heavy power fast action rod that Randall Tharp used with his fishing line, then he would probably one, either snap that fluorocarbon leader a lot or two, he's gonna rip really big holes in that fish when he goes to set the hook, which is going to make that fish come off when they come up and jump. But this is the biggest reason why you see so many guys out there that have different rod and line configurations for the exact same bait. Now, not only can you picking out a certain fishing line impact the rods that you use, it can also impact the hook that you can use. I can remember years and years ago, I used to use straight monofilament line for my top water baits. And I can remember when I was like 15 years old pond fishing, and I would lose these fish that I was making these long bomb casts to, they would always pop off the hook. Now, something that I decided to do on my top waters is I actually downsized my hook and put a thinner wire treble hook on my top waters and I started hooking up and landing a lot more fish. Now fast forward a few years and I was actually starting to fish a lot more braided line with my top waters. Now one thing that I found real soon, especially after catching a few smallmouth, if I use those light wire hooks with braided line, those smallmouth or those big fish would bend out that hook every single time because braided line again has zero stretch. So you really have to understand the characteristics of your line in order to make sure you're going to fish the right rod and the right hooks. To me, that is a really huge mistake that if you don't fully understand can cost you a lot of fish out there on the water. Now, the third mistake when it comes to your fishing line is not taking care of your fishing line. This is something that uh, almost every angler I think does at times. I know that I have done this a lot over my fishing career at times is not taking care of the line that I have. There's been days out there in the water where I'm retying up a, a bait or, or, or a leader of some sort and I literally just throw the fishing line in the bottom of my boat. I just don't really care about it at all. Now, something that really impacts your fishing line, something that can really weaken your fishing line is heat and sunlight. If you have a lot of direct sunlight on your fishing line, those UV rays and that heat can destroy that line. It can make your 10 pound test turn into six or seven pound tests really, really quick. So simply keeping your fishing line in the shade and out of the really hot conditions is something that I find to be really important. I actually have a Rubbermaid container that kind of stores all of my fishing line. And if I know that it's going to be extremely hot, I will take that out. I will leave it at home, especially on those days where I know that I'm probably not gonna be re-spooling a whole lot. Now, the other thing that you can do is use a line conditioner. There's several of these out there on the market. They just help to make your line stay a little bit more supple out there on the water. I think especially with fluorocarbon line, we spend so much money that it's not a bad idea to use a little line conditioner and just keep that line going as good as you can for as long as you can. Now, like I said, this video really derived from this video right here where I go through and I actually did 700 25 different tests to try to find the best fluorocarbon fishing line. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I think you'll enjoy this one as well. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.